assuming that most order members are short of stream entry or insight with a capital I, and considering the fact that this doesn't seem to prevent them from teaching the Dharma, some people may wonder whether in FWBU centers one will really encounter the Buddha Dharma rather than mere Buddhistic ideas and views which might be very misleading. So one, what is your basis of trust in order members' ability to act as Dharma teachers? Two, how can friends, mitras and fellow order members assess an order member's understanding of spiritual principles and his her ability to teach the Dharma according to the needs of the individuals concerned. Hmm. I, I, I think there's, there's one particular point we need to bear in mind here, which is that in a way the Dharma teaches itself. Hmm? So what, what do I mean exactly by that? I think that if, if you genuinely try to communicate the Dharma, especially if you base yourself on traditional material, perhaps traditional formulae, hmm, very often something is transmitted more than you yourself personally, individually realize. Hmm? And sometimes this can happen in a quite striking manner. Um, I, 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 I know of cases, well I remember cases in India where, uh, well just to speak from my own experience for a moment, where I've given perhaps to an audience of, of ex-untouchables, this was many, many years ago, not on recent visits, where I've given a very simple talk on the five precepts. Nothing very extraordinary, nothing you know, unusual or out of the way. Just a very straightforward, very simple, very basic exposition of the five precepts. And afterwards, people have come to me and said, well, it was an absolute revelation to them. They felt as though their whole life had been changed, etc., eh? etc. Et because you know, there, were, there was something communicated in that apparently simple teaching beyond what I had perhaps thought that I was communicating. And I've, I've come across the same sort of thing in England, in, well, to an even greater extent, especially with regard to talks given by order members. I, I've known cases where order members have come to me and said, oh, bunch I had to give a talk, a certain you know, place, maybe a, the central, maybe a school, something like that, the other day, and it really was a dreadful lecture. I was very dissatisfied with it. I was not at all happy afterwards. And then someone comes to me later on, maybe even years later, and says, on such and such day, I went along to such and such, but I heard that order member give a talk, huh? and it absolutely bowled me over. <laughs> and, uh, well, why is this? It's because, I mean, something is communicated of which perhaps you, you are not fully aware yourself. Perhaps you haven't understood that particular teaching very deeply, but you are communicating that teaching. And uh, perhaps the person who is listening to it is getting more out of it, strange to say, than you personally are putting into it. Hmm? So one mustn't forget that. So it isn't just a question of trusting all the members, it's also a question of trusting the Dharma. Hmm? And uh, of course, all the members uh, you know, should study the Dharma, should prepare their talks properly, should get their facts right, should be clear, uh, should really try to communicate. But um, to some extent it's not up to them. The, well, the teaching is already there, they're trying to reflect that, they're trying to communicate that. Or perhaps you could say they, they should just try to allow the Dharma to communicate itself and not get in the way with their own personal views and personal interpretation, just be quite content to give a quite straightforward exposition of the Dharma from this or that point of view. Hmm? So I'm quite satisfied that most order members can do this. I think there are very, very few order members who can't put across the, the Dharma um, in this sort of way to a reasonably receptive and open-minded audience.